Christian, Christian, uh, great to have you on, man. How's it going? Hey, thanks for setting up the time on your, your weekend and having me uh, chat a little bit. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Been uh, been on a grind. I did uh, two interviews already, and uh, this is the third one. So I uh, have a little bit of time. And uh, yeah, I am uh, I happen to have um, a background in commercial photography, so uh, I hope we could uh, have a great discussion around uh, everything related to uh, photography and uh, what motivates us to make stunning images, you know? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to, to start out by, um, you know, talking a little bit about uh, your story and uh, how you basically came to came to have a camera in your hand and start shooting landscape. I want to know a little bit more about that story and how that just how that came to be. You know. Yeah. So um, growing up, uh, I kind of grew up in the, the Lake Tahoe area. Um, it was kind of always outside, running around and and uh, enjoying nature. And then as I got older and kind of, you know, went to middle school and high school and kind of had other responsibilities. I kind of strayed away from uh, the outdoors, unfortunately. Um, it wasn't until after high school where me and uh, a good friend from school had reconnected and we started going hiking a lot in the area. Uh, every day after work, it just felt like we were, you know, looking to catch sunsets or hit a different trail or take a different road trip or do a different backpacking trip every weekend when we were just going out every day after work and every weekend for months. And it initially kind of started, we were running around a lot with um, our smartphones and my buddy at the time had a GoPro and that was kind of before GoPros had, you know, the screens on the back. So you couldn't really see what you were doing or what the images were looking like or what your composition was like. And after kind of, doing a bunch of hikes and backpacking and shooting a bunch, we were kind of, um, you know, buying little tripods and mounts and, you know, quarter inch tripod plates and little adapters to kind of hold our phones for yeah. us to do. So was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just said, I just said, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, um, that's really interesting. Have you, have, I, I want to ask, have you always, been in the in the Tahoe area? Yeah, so I, I was born uh, in the Reno area, but uh, I lived up in the Tahoe as a kid growing up, and now I'm kind of in the Reno Tahoe area still. So been here most of my life, but it's pretty hard to leave. So yeah, are you uh, have you have you ever traveled to to uh, to shoot landscapes maybe somewhere else around the world, or are you really? bound and loyal to that little piece of the United States? A lot of my photos are in the, the area, but yeah, I've been uh, pretty much all over the, the Western and, and Midwest part of the United States, as well as some of the East Coast for some work in the past. Uh, and I've been up in Canada a little bit around uh, the British Columbia area and Vancouver for a couple trips just to kind of take pictures. So not, not always entirely, you know, strapped down here, but yeah, a lot of my images are kind of typically in the area just cause you know, it's so, uh, open and beautiful and there's just so much great land and hiking and backpacking in the area that it's, 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 it's pretty easy to go out somewhere new and get, you know, some new content. Yeah, I totally, totally get that. And uh, I was curious, were you ever attracted to uh, other genres in photography, uh, whether it be, you know, still life or streets or uh, some, just another genre, basically? I was uh, just curious if you happened to only do landscapes or if you, if you ever did something else as well. <laughs> Yeah, so back in 2017, we uh, started a little thing, Alpine Visuals, uh, with my two other buddies. Um, and at that point, we kind of had been doing a little bit of portraiture and weddings and uh, commercial, like video real estate uh, for a lot of the travel agencies here in the area and a lot of the resorts, hotels and such. Mm -hmm. So we kind of joined forces on that and uh, branched off of that. So since about 2017, um, been doing, uh, portraiture and weddings and, uh, 
we shoot a lot of real estate content um, for a lot of the tall rentals and uh, property listings up there. Um, and then a lot of the commercial video stuff we do uh, is typically for hotels that are doing events, concerts, um, pretty much everything except for sports. Okay. I, I've dabbled a little bit in, in the street photography the last couple of years and been having a lot of fun with that, um, mostly on like my Fuji setup just because it's just so easy and lightweight to take with me. But yeah, I think we've, uh, I've shot and really enjoyed and, and expanded into pretty much every kind of style of photography that for sports. Just yeah. something I've never really like, gone out to shoot, but would love to try it one day. Yeah, definitely. And just by uh, just by pure curiosity, I was I mean because I I've seen a lot of uh, landscape photography uh, all along uh, my my career as a photographer, and I, boy I gotta say when I saw yours I was like Jesus it's such a gem to have this uh, kind of work come to come in the Cardano scene you know. And I wanted to know a little bit more of uh, how you came to learn about uh, the this whole uh, NFT space and w what you think about it. Yeah, so uh, my kind of history experience goes back uh, back in 2009, 2010, kind of in the genesis era of uh, Bitcoin. I, w I was mining Bitcoin back then. And the idea around Bitcoin was uh, very uh, interesting to me. Um, and I kind of dabbled in it for a little bit and mined for a couple months um, on an old computer of mine and, and kind of read into the white paper and dabbled in on the forums in the very early stages of the kind of industry and the space. And for a couple of years after that, I kind of fell out, um, you know, just other responsibilities as I was finishing school and then when I got out of school I got a, a nine to five and was kind of doing that and so I didn't really have a lot of time to kind of explore it again and it was when um back in 2018 uh, my brother had uh dabbled with crypto kitties which was like that you know the very early kind of idea around nfts and kind of was exploring that was having fun with you know little early projects like that and um it wasn't until uh, about 2020 is when i kind of started to explore um nfts in particular um and i kind of had been following uh, cardano since 2020 as well and it was the implementation of the NFTs themselves being native assets on chain that really appealed to me. Um, and then when I saw the implementation of a lot of the smart contract functionality over the last couple months, as well as, you know, the really powerful royalty idea. So when I kind of started to explore and, and do like a deep dive. And so I wanted to really explore what ch other chains were doing and what other marketplaces were doing and, and what other standards were being the, you know, different protocols and such. And it was the combination of just the extremely cheap transaction fee on Cardano and the speed of that network, but also uh, the, the extremely small amount of energy usage. Um, outside of the traditional NFT space, my print sales uh, kind of have the same idea where a percentage of sale is, is donated to support the specific location where each photograph was taken at. And so I started to kind of explore, well, if I wanted to do this same kind of idea and the same kind of principles and value and, and transfer that over into the NFT space, how could I do something like that that would be meaningful? And so as I looked at Ethereum, um, and that was kind of a little bit before Tezos kind of started doing its thing with NFTs and, and Polygon. Um, it didn't feel right to me to launch on Ethereum just because the collection was about the conservancy and, and protecting these locations. And I had serious concerns about, uh, you know, the energy usage behind Ethereum, as well as uh, the layer on Bitcoin, like Stacks, which you might be familiar with. Yeah. So when I kind of learned that the energy uses was about, you know, 17,000 times less than like Bitcoin and Ethereum is when I kind of took a look back in November and, and really like dove in. Um, 
so that was a pretty good a pretty good combination of things on why I, I I set on Cardano specifically. But yeah, it's been a great place for the the collection and and for, and for what I'm looking to do with it. Awesome, awesome, and. Uh... And so you said that uh, if some uh, if some people purchase uh, an NFT that was photographed in a certain location, uh, that would help uh, conserve uh, that location in terms of environment. Uh, how does how does that work exactly? I, I want to take a deep dive on that because I find it super interesting and uh, happen to be like a very noble cause, right? So, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So the um, at at sale, eight um, percent goes to uh, the supported nonprofit. And back in November, and over the last couple of weeks before I launched the collection on the beginning of July, I I did a kind of deep dive on what organizations I was looking to support, and so I kind of dived into which ones had. Uh, accredited history um, and were kind of the best of the best for each specific location and so I narrowed it down to about 25 organizations and so when a piece the, at first sale 8% of the, whatever the total is at time of sale goes to uh, is donated directly to that organization and then the, the uh, royalty on the collection is 5% and Three percent of that is revolving, so it goes to the uh, organ, the supported organization, um, in perpetuity, and then two percent goes to Wallet. And so the idea behind that is every time that the artwork changes hands, um, I'm only making two percent on that, and the th- and three percent is going to those organizations. So that's um, secondhand uh, sales. The first would be just the eight percent outright. So after we launched. The collection was on the second day, um, the Peace Zion Night sold. And the supported organization for that is Zion National Park Forever Project. So at the time of the sale, the 8% amounted to uh, about $180. And so that was forwarded directly to them uh, within minutes of the sale. Um, It was pretty neat. They sent a a thank you letter in the mail. And um, the reason why I picked them specifically was because they're kind of like a a partner uh, with the National Park Foundation specifically, and so they're one of the ones that work directly with the the federal government and being like the go-to. So they do a lot of like educational um, outings with like the community and with uh, kid groups like field trips and such, but they also do a lot of uh, conservation in terms of like upkeep of the park itself, the waterways, teaching people about invasive species there and vice versa. So that kind of principle applied to all locations was um, images uh, and the nonprofits specifically for those spots. Any place that isn't necessarily like outdoors, uh, there's a couple in there like Seattle and uh, a shot from Las Vegas. Um, I couldn't really do uh, conservancy because they're kind of like concrete jungles. So the idea there is um, in Seattle, uh, the funds go to Youth in Focus, which is a a kids like a young teen program where they uh, have um, film cameras and they have like a film lab as well as digital cameras. And there's instructors out kind of volunteer. Cool. Cool, cool, and that that whole series that you that you minted uh, is called New Horizons. Uh, I want to know how you how you how you came up with uh, with that name. Yeah, so the name kind of originated from when I looked at what I wanted to do with uh, these photographs. Um, I had about two hundred to three hundred thousand photos that I went through and. Um, I narrowed it down to these 50 uh, specifically, and I kind of wanted to look at, you know, what is different about this kind of medium or this like format. And to me and a lot of other people in the space, this industry is like so new and it's kind of like pioneering a lot of different aspects around like creators and artists and decentralization and identity and governance and such. 
Um, so to me and to a lot of people, it, it felt like a new horizon, like a new frontier. Um, and that's kind of where the, the name came from. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, so you, it, when I, when I went through those, uh, pictures from new horizon, it's, uh, it was super obvious for me that you, you really have like s- deep love for uh, nature and the environment and, um, everything, everything related to to mother nature basically and you're really exposing uh the the pure beauty of uh mother nature and i wanted maybe to touch on like how that how how your love for for nature and the environment kind of came to be did it come from your your childhood in uh in tahoe and running around outdoors or is there a little bit more to to that story yeah, um, growing up in, in Tahoe, you know, I I have, you know, I have eight siblings, so there's like four brothers and, and three sisters, and whenever we'd come home from school, our routine was, you know, we would just kind of throw our backpacks down, and then we would climb our 10-foot fence that we had to kind of keep bears out. Um, we would jump over the fence, and we would just run around out there um, in the woods behind our house until the sun went down. And that's when we knew, you know, it was like time to come home and, and, and have dinner. And it was kind of in those moments where, you know, my brothers were bigger than me and my sisters were bigger than me because um, I'm the youngest in the family. So they would always get ahead of me um, and I would be kind of the one that straggles behind to get back to the house. But it was always those moments where, the sun would be setting and like you just get those slivers of light, like those rays, you know, the golden hour. Um, and as I got older, I kind of like always resonated with that feeling. And when I started to go out more and, and pick up cameras and go shooting a lot with my good friend, um, I started to kind of get that feeling again, which I had lost for, you know, many years, you know, as we get older and we, get responsibilities and school and then we have jobs and and families and uh, all sorts of things. It always feels like we're being kind of like pulled away from these places and from that feeling. And so I wanted to kind of reconnect with that Um, and just going out and shooting again and being outdoors. Like it's what brought me outdoors again, but also like what kept me there Um, because I wasn't just kind of sitting outdoors. I was, making the most of being outdoors and then I was able to kind of take a piece of that feeling back home with me and that's kind of what I try to invoke uh in my photographs I always kind of have like a central uh a theme but it's typically draws you in in the center and whatever's in focus is typically at the center um so they kind of like pull you in uh with the light and the color so I'm trying to kind of you know convey that emotion through the photographs that I felt as a kid and, and feel when I go out. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people, like I'm sure, you know, when you go out and shoot, you probably have the same kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I totally, I totally get that. Uh, now you said that to, to capture all those, all those feelings you had and to create those, um, those memories of your outdoor experiences when you were, working on new horizons you actually made between 200 and 300,000 pictures and that seems like an immense uh, huge amount of shooting um i, I want to know how much how much time did it did it take you to make this uh the this huge collection of um of uh, of photos yeah so as i look through the a lot of my photographs it's kind of like my life's work that i've shot um since about 2015 and i've done some sporadic sprinkles of prints and such um but there's never been a kind of curated gallery or a showing or museum for me so i never really had like a collection specifically um whether that was like a print collection or a gallery collection so when i kind of explored the nft space I said, well, I'm going to have to kind of come down to a set amount of numbers. And that was one of the biggest challenges was, do I do five? Do I do 25? Do I do a thousand or 5,000 or do I do additions? And I kind of narrowed it down to 50 um, because it 
I got really close to between like 50 and 100 and I kept kind of falling in like the 60, 70. So then I was kind of looking, well, should we do 75 or bump it up to 100? And so um, I kind of narrowed it down to 50, which was quite a challenge. Um, and so out of all those images that I've captured, um, when I thought about, well, what, what, like, what do I want to kind of um, come across the most in my collection? Um, it ended up, being these 50 photographs and some of these photographs there's a few that aren't included um in the collection that i haven't printed or haven't minted which i'm looking to do like separate mintings on or additions on or, or signed prints um whichever kind of format they take these are kind of um in terms of my life of photography so far these are the best photographs to me that i've taken and, and the ones that resonate the most with me. So they're kind of the ones that like made the, the collection, kind of my babies. Yeah, you could, uh, you could really feel that when you, when you go on uh, Artifact and you look at that profile. I was, uh, I was stunned, man. You could, you could really see the amount of work that's been put into that. It's, uh, it's really insane. And uh, I, when I was looking th at, at your work, I was, I was thinking, man, that would be, that would be so cool, actually, to make a to make a book out of those out of those pictures, right? Uh, have you ever thought uh, of uh, making one with uh, with the pictures that you you didn't mint? Like maybe let's say you have a uh, hundred fifty other good pictures besides the fifty that you minted, and maybe you could I don't know make a book out of that or and have it published or something. I know I know a lot of ph photographers like even myself we. You know, we really like to to make books, and I was just curious if uh, you ever you ever done one or ever had that experience of making one. Yeah, I've had a bunch of people. They always say, "Man, you should uh, write books." Um, the the photos when I typically post them, um, I'm by no means like a, a writer at all, um, but. I try to, when I post the photographs, typically where they've resided before um, Twitter and, and the NFT kind of scene uh, was mostly through Instagram. And I try to convey how I felt when I was there and when I took the photograph. So when you look at the image, you see what I saw in the exact moment um, because nothing in the photographs is like, artificially added. Um, I don't add or remove anything to the photographs. They're, all of them are single exposures, um, whether it's like a fast exposure or like a, a single long exposure. Um, so I try to convey the authentic, like that's how it was when I saw it um, to me. And then also like how I felt. And a lot of people kind of resonate with the the captions that I write on there. And so I thought about putting together those captions into like a book specifically. I started writing a, I guess you could say it was like an autobiography, but then I kind of had that, uh, you know, imposter syndrome where I was like, do people really want to read my story or do they want to read these captions in like a printed format? And I started, I actually wrote about 40 or 50 pages of an autobiography and I thought about sprinkling photos in there. Um, and I'm like kind of torn because I was like, I, you know, I want to complete an autobiography that's also like a picture, you know, zine, or do I want to do just like a photo book that's just the photos and then maybe a little bit of the captions. Um, so it's something that I've kind of been exploring. You mentioned that uh, in your work, have you done any kind of printed books like that? Like what's your kind of experience with other artists? Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, I've made uh, I've made two books. And one of those books is actually called um, uh, Between Beauty and Darkness. And it was in a time where uh, I used to live in Corsica. And uh, it's an island in the Mediterranean Sea that belongs to France and there's a happens to be a ton of abandoned villages and I was a little bit lost at the time and I needed to understand like who I was and who I was and understand my surroundings so I took three years out of my life and I went to every single one of those villages at sunrise and sunset and I traveled around there and I shot as many villages as I can, and and over the course of three years, and I I had so much uh, material, and 
and uh, it was I felt really bad for those pictures to be sitting on a sitting there on a hard drive and not doing really anything. I made a couple of prints, but uh, I ended up making a a physical book so actually so people could actually uh, experience that traveling through villages in in about I don't know fifteen twenty minutes those three years and experience those three years in about 20 minutes. And I found that there's a huge power in that. And the book was uh, self-published. Uh, of course, it was not a success. It cost me a, sh a load of money. And I only made uh, a few sales, even though the I got really good feedback from it. But I was in Corsica at the time, and, and, uh, and the, the market just, you know, it wasn't there, right? But I, I still have a few. I still have a few cof copies, and when my probably when my photography gets uh, gets a little bit further down the road, I might I might um, reprint that book again, actually. And uh, and yeah, and then I made a second book. It was more of a, a poetry portraiture, and um, yeah. But the, that that first book is um, yeah between beauty and darkness. That was uh, quite an experience, and I think there's a there's huge power in putting a collection of, of pictures in a, in a book. And the crazy part is that I, I didn't in, in beauty in between beauty and darkness. I didn't, I didn't even put uh, captions or words or anything like that. I just, I just went through the pictures and I wanted to tell a story just by how the pictures were arranged basically. And, um, and it worked well. It worked well. It's the, the story of a, a journey through the Corsican mountains uh, and uh, abandoned villages, and it works. It works really well, and I was really happy about it. And it was um, it was a really great experience. And you know, when I when I look at your work, I I, I would love to to own a, a book that 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 com that has some uh, some of those images and some of that some of that story of, of your life because I mean it's like if you've been doing this for six seven eight years and you've been shooting that New Horizons that collection from New Horizons for for five years if I'm not mistaken I, I would love to see that kind of condensed you know condensed into into maybe if it's not a, even a book but it could be a zine and I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of beauty in in making a book out of uh, out of photographs that's uh that's my, that's my opinion i don't I, i'd love to know what you think about that yeah no you you inspired um, i pulled up my uh book format that i had been writing and uh I'm, I'm reading through it again and looking at the cover and the back and you know the intro and everything and yeah i'm uh you got me pulling it up again and i'm reading through some of it and the design layout i did and the way the pictures are put on here and i you know, I'm kind of thinking, why did I even stop this? I think this was like last year. So, yeah, you know, I'd, I would actually love to send you kind of the idea behind this um, and the layout in like the first page or two and see what you're thinking. But um, in terms of, you know, what, what do you think in and, and and your experience in terms of creating a, a, a book, um, are you kind of more interested in the shorter kind of stories, worded kind of thing, but also, uh, you know, more exposure on the photographs that are along the journey or more of a, a full book kind of autobiography with like, you know, pictures sprinkled in. I don't know if you've read um, Joe Greer's new book, The Lay of the Land. Oh, I've, I, I, I happen to... to... To to uh, to follow Joe Greer, but I, I I didn't buy his book yet. I, I have many books that I still need to buy, and I haven't bought his yet. Uh, but I'm sure it's beautiful because that guy is uh, that guy does really really great work. Um, I haven't seen it, but um, uh, like when uh when 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 I would like make a book, I think I just I just want to. To, to share like a piece of the story it doesn't for me it doesn't have to be uh, an autobiography a whole autobiography of my life but i try to make it um express uh, a glimpse in time a, a glimpse of my thought in time right 
And um, there's great power in taking, you know, three years of uh, of your photographs. And most of the time, you when you start putting one next to the other and try playing around with order and shape and form, um, there's a there's a really uh, beautiful story to tell about the the journey itself, right? That that journey that you went through to to, to get these um, to get these pictures, and uh, th there's huge power in that. Now, the the second book I made was uh, a little bit really different because it was more of a of a of a poetry book where I I mixed uh, images of um, uh, portraits and paintings and stuff like that. It, it was very it was really different. But uh, yeah, at that first book, you know, it's uh, it's it's really powerful. And even uh, like not talking about like making making money or or stuff like that. But there, uh, on a personal level, it feels like the it felt like the work was finished. Like until until that book came out of the print room, like it felt like that project around my journey across those villages was never finished like i didn't meet an end to that and i needed i needed to find the the end to that journey and that's where i said okay i need to print this and that's how that's how the the first book was born and i always i always encourage uh, you know photographers who do uh, collections, whatever it may be, it could be still life, it could be landscapes. I would always encourage uh, like to to follow gut instinct and either make a, a zine or a book, something physical that someone could hold. I just I just think there's huge power in that. You know, I'm probably repeating myself and saying the same thing over and over again, but but yeah, I just I just love making books, you know, and I'm only at the beginning, and I just I know that I I need to make you know so many more with uh with my photography so I, I would definitely try to you know encourage others and yourself to do the same thing i think i think that'd be cool yeah do you uh do you have the name of the, your two books i would love to check them out yeah actually uh i wanted uh i want to i want to set up um i want to set up uh, an, on an online store actually on my uh on my website i'm using squarespace uh, I need to, uh, I actually need to, to, to print more out because I've made limited editions. I've only printed, uh, the first book, I only print 50 copies and the second book, I only printed five. So imagine like how, how rare that is. Right. But, uh, it's, uh, it's on demand. So, uh, definitely I'll, I'll print, uh, I'll print both out and uh and uh send them over when uh when i have some free time i'll have i'll have some fun and actually do that and uh i'll send them over to you to america so you could just you know have a look it's uh it's cool it's cool maybe you could uh maybe you could like get something from it but uh but i don't consider myself like a, a super a super like i don't know uh clean and professional i like i really like imperfection like one of my favorite photographers is uh, Daido Moriyama. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, yeah, he was the a great inspiration for me, a Japanese photographer, and uh, his work has a lot to do with uh, uh, the the seek of uh, imperfection and uh, and storytelling. And yeah, that that guy's a that guy's a monster. Like he made uh, I don't know, he made like two hundred books. Like he's crazy about books, you know. He even did a show where you could actually come in the show and and choose which choose the order of the pages yourself, and he would print it on the spot for you, which seems like a, an insane concept, right? And um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, th those two books, um, when I have some free time, I'll, I'll do uh, another. I'll do another limited edition uh, print, and I'll you know I'll definitely I'll definitely send them over to you, man. Oh, and, uh, yeah. and yeah, and the photography account is Don Samick. By the way, that's my that's my name. It's Don Samick. Um, I have uh, multiple. Yeah. yeah, I have multiple accounts. I I have an art uh, more artsy account, uh, Poetonic. That's kind of like my kind of like my, my where I put my dark <laughs> my dark uh, my dark work and uh, and uh, Don Samick on Twitter. I'm barely like I'm barely known. I only 
uh, on social media. I barely have like 50 followers, I think, on my on my photography Twitter account. But um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I'll definitely I'll definitely you know when I have some free time, I'll, I'll think about doing that for sure. Yeah, send me your profile too. Uh, Twitter's search functionality is like super bad. So whenever you search anything, it's like hard to find people. But, but yes, please absolutely um, send me your your uh, yeah. photo uh, Twitter, like in a message or something. Just you know, so it's easy to get. To yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll send you. Uh, I'll, send, I'll send you that link for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pulling everything back up again, and I'll have to send you like the super duper rough drafts. I'll probably just export them out as like a just a, a PNG scan, just so they're easy to like read and send across. Um, you don't have to deal with like a PDF. But yeah, I'm like reading through this. I'm looking at uh, some of the pictures that made it into New Horizons because I was I was writing this about um, two years ago. Um, and I got a couple, I got a pretty good amount of pages into it, but yeah, I'm like reading through this and a lot of people, they, yeah, they always comment on like the captions on Instagram. They're like, wow, I really like resonate like with what you said or like the emotions that you can bring through this. And so that was kind of the idea. And yeah, as the imposter syndrome, it was like, well, if I wrote like a autobiography or like a, a photo book, like you know, is, is everybody just looking to check the photos out and they don't really, like, you know, care about the story or, like, who would even read it? But, yeah, part of me is just, like, you know what? Like, if only one or two people read it, then, like, to me, that makes it a success. And that's kind of how I went into um, the collection on Cardano as I knew putting it out that not only would it be, like, on Cardano, which, you know, in terms of, like, market hold in the nft space is like is a lot less than like ethereum is i i felt like this network felt more like home for the collection and what it was about and what i was looking to do with it um and yeah so i ended up kind of putting the set out and then um, i was like you know what to me it's a success just because it's out there yeah. And if it doesn't make any sales, then it doesn't matter to me because I tried something new and I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot. And yeah, it was like the second day I had a sale and I was just like super excited. Um, so the uh, uh, Cartier who owns it currently, um, he's kind of um, in the artifact space as well. Um, I'm in the works to get him a print sent out that I'll have signed and, and stamped and I'll ship that out to him. So that's been super rad to see and uh yeah super grateful for that and and yeah just the fact that the collection is out there is is a is a win to me and the fact that so many people are like resonating and enjoying the photos is kind of what it's always been about to me never really been so much in terms of like chasing commercial success or uh, it's never really been about money to me or anything it's like how do i just create photos that i love that i hope other people will and people love them or people don't um there's you know people who i kind of shoot from the hip in terms of landscape photography i don't ever you really use tripods unless i'm doing like a long exposure um i don't do too much with like filters and i'm not very technical about being like super precise on bracketing or focus stacking or um the settings a lot of the time um I get the settings dialed in in the moment I get a photo that I'm happy with. And to me, that's like what matters. Um, there's some occasions where I've done, you know, an exposure or two, and then you stack them and, uh, you know, Photoshop or Lightroom, just because it's easier to get the foreground well exposed and then the background well exposed. They're using like a shutter trigger for, you know, illuminating the foreground with a long exposure and then doing a shorter long exposure for the stars so you don't get, like, trailing. I've done a couple of those, but to me, they always kind of felt like uh, they didn't feel authentic because I had to use, like, a post-shooting method to create that photo. So a lot of all, all these photographs that are in the collection and that I typically do are just, like, shot as one exposure and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I, to I totally get that. Uh, sometimes uh, when you dive into the more uh, technical aspects and you focus on on technique and doing some fancy stuff, it, it usually doesn't end well because 
uh, it doesn't it doesn't really um, define you. And uh, I really I really believe in um, in belie- I really believe in knowing who you are and what you want to say. And when you look at your work, it's really obvious. And you know your your love for nature, uh, the the outdoor scenes, and all that thing. It's um, it's it's really you could feel it. Like you see it in the pictures. It's really who you are, right? And um, and yeah, I'll be waiting for that book. And uh, and I think um, I think the the cool part is that um, you could probably even. If you make a, a print-ready PDF, what could be cool, and it's what I'm trying to do with the magazine, is that if you do a print-ready PDF, like pe- people could print it anywhere they are, and you could actually mint that book, and people could print it themselves, you know? And I've been thinking about a way to do that with the, with the magazine, but it hasn't really, really gone through yet. But uh, I think there is huge power in in uh in minting like an entire book in itself uh and have it stored on chain uh like forever you know um it's really great to sell i think it's really great to selling individual photographs uh but uh yeah book digital digital books are uh, could be could be really cool too uh it's not it's not physical you don't have it in your hand but if the people have the possibility of printing it on their end then it could be extremely interesting to to mint something like that, and I've been thinking about that for my for for my photography account for uh, the magazine, and and um, yeah, there's huge power into just you know printing and having something physical. It's so much more persuasive, in, in my opinion. Like when you when you show someone something physical instead of showing him like a, a tablet or a smartphone or whatever, it's a, it just seems a lot more persuasive and and uh, authentic and and the gesture is a lot seems to be a lot more more beautiful. I don't know if uh, you agree with me on that, but you know we could all, we could, we could talk about that. Actually, did you read that um, dissertation out of the University of Oxford from Eva, uh, Eva Gantner, I think it is? She wrote her that dissertation uh, and then uh, released it as a mint. And if you like sent her to Ada, she would send you uh, the minted copy to your wallet. So you had like a, because you could go on the pool PM uh, and just download the PDF and view it like that and like print it. But if you wanted like a minted copy directly, um, you just send her to Ada and she sends it to you. But um, I, I asked for permission to print it as well. And I printed it out just because it was like such a, a fantastic piece of work um, that I like wanted to have that printed on my desk that I could, you know, use a highlighter on where I could circle things or take notes on. And it, it lives on my desk now the last week. And it's, it's a fantastic read. I'm sure you've, you've probably seen it. If not, I could send it to you. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to see it because I haven't heard about that. And, uh, and uh, I'd I'd love to uh, love to see. It. Is it a is it a dissert? Well, what's the dissertation uh, on? Uh, it's called Medium is Message: A Case for Blockchain as an Art Medium. And the examples that she uses is Cardano uh, NFT collection. So the unsigned um, algorithms. Um, how instead of just putting art on a blockchain, they actually utilized Cardano's uh, functionality and programming and then added in mathematics to where the blockchain actually created the art instead of the art just put on the blockchain. Damn, that's uh, that's really powerful. Seems great. Yeah, 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 like yeah it seems great. Master's, master's dissertation, so like everything for her education came down to this dissertation and it's like 40 pages and it's a fantastic read. And the fact that it's all about um, not only blockchain and art on blockchain in particular, but the fact that it's written based on Cardano is like really neat because it's not about like other chains. So it feels like more at home, right? Cause we're kind of in Cardano and the CNFT scene. Yeah. So it, it, and it's, and it's projects that we're all familiar with. Damn. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, can, uh, later on uh, when you have the time? Can you send me the the link so I could uh, maybe um, maybe uh, reach out and send uh, send some send those to Ada so I could have a. a co- I'd love to have uh, two or three copies actually in my in my own wallet of that. And I know there's um, 
There's a huge uh, fan of education on Cardano here called uh, Cardano Nudes. And uh, we, a weird name, but uh, trust me, he's really um, quite the guy in, uh, in the space. And he's building actually a library of knowledge uh, directly from a wallet uh, with educational content. So I'm sure that could be of a huge interest to him as well. So uh, yeah, definitely send me the, the the link so I could uh, have some uh, have some copies in my in my wallet. I I'd love that, you know. And if you tell me it's a good read, I'll definitely I'll definitely take the time to to to, to read it. I'm always keen on you know learning new learning new things and diving into other people's mind. And yeah, forty pages. It's like a it's a, it's like a little book. It's like a little book and. and uh, and uh, yeah, there's huge power in uh, in reading and diving into other people's mind. Even if the book is only made of uh, of pictures, you're still taking a piece of that of that person's life, you know. And um, and yeah, man, it's uh, it's great. It's great. So, uh, uh, will you ever? Do you ever like plan on on releasing uh, and working? Maybe just working a little bit more on. Uh, on uh on that book we were talking about now that we're talking about it yeah actually i have i pulled it up just now because i was like you know what i haven't like pulled that up in a while and yeah i, I just started looking at it again and I, I read the cover again and i looked at the cover that i designed and the pages like the little artworks that i put on the pages that are kind of like fun and interesting and then um the text and the format layout uh is it kind of already all done um i don't know if it's like if i send it to a print if it's like format print ready but i'm sure it would be easy to kind of convert that over but yeah i started reading through it and there's already a couple pictures in there and you know says where they were taken and the date and stuff um there's like little it's kind of like my story from uh childhood and what got me into for diary the, the the book idea itself is called um because i i always people ask me how did you get into cameras and i always say well i never cared for cameras because when i was growing up i i didn't um i would see like anybody you just see a fantastic photograph in a magazine or like on a national geographic magazine and you see cameras like in the store and you're just kind of like oh cool it's a camera and so i would see a beautiful image and i would appreciate the image itself um but i never really thought about like what went into taking the photograph and how it was like put together and the technical background um so i have like an it background um that i've done for like work and stuff and i'm like really process and like uh process engineering kind of like organized in terms of my like thinking um so the idea around cameras and how they worked and the, the numbers and the settings never really was like far-fetched to me i just never i like would see cameras and i never cared about them and i never cared about taking pictures i like never cared about getting one and then it was just that one day where me and my buddy just like both went in a best buy and we like left with cameras at night and then like everything changed so yeah it's called i never cared for cameras how an object unveiled a passion and built a life yeah 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 there's, a, there's a camera right? you know there was an object um and i never really i never played music i never danced i never really did sports um and so my hobbies were more tech related uh, and i never really like had a passion or for anything really uh i mean like i like computers and toying with technology and like playing games and stuff of course but um i never really like had a true passion you know there's people who paint their whole life or they dance their whole lives or they love to crochet or they love working on cars and i like working on computers but like you don't always work on computers every day unless you know it's for your job yeah so that's kind of where it came from was it was like an object like built this passion and and because of that object i met all the people in the reno tower photography scene and then eventually all over the country um and made a lot of friends and went to a lot of amazing places like part of the reason why i take road trips and i go places is because i want to take photos it's not so much like seeing family or friends it's like i want to get to that place and take a photograph and so like how do i get there yeah that's so kind of it's like drives a lot of my life which is crazy to think about that like an object could do that so the book kind of is exploring the story idea behind me but i kind of want to lean it more towards like the focus of photographs and how they're made but also that idea 
compound object could build a life. Because sometimes when I read like people's stories, it's like moving and inspirational, but like I always feel it's like this line between like you're it's like kind of narcissistic and you're just like talking about yourself all the time and like people might not always resonate with that like some people might think like well why do i want to read a book about your life but if you could twist it in a way where it's like a story about my life but also how these pictures came to be and like what my thoughts are on the process i think that's people can like resonate with that more but um, that's just my opinion though yeah, it's. Uh, I think the, the 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 whole key in that, the whole key in that into making, into into sharing your story is really to, I think it's really to remain humble, you know. And I think it's one of the most, um, one of the most powerful values as a well for me as a photographer was to was to really just you know remain simple and remain humble. And not 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 being cocky and just you know really being who I am and and telling people what I want to say and and uh, sometimes I'm a little bit too direct and and I get slapped for it but most of the time you know by just being who I am and and staying humble like if I make a, a beautiful image if I make a beautiful still life image I'm not gonna. Like I'm not gonna the shout on the roof about it and tell everyone that I'm a better photographer than they are. Like that's not my goal. My, I really want to, you know, I really want to, to to learn. Every time I see an image from another photographer, I just I have a feeling that I'm learning something. That I'm I'm not learning much much from the photograph, but I'm actually learning from the person's story just by looking at a collection of his work. And yeah, there's there's really great power in that, and just looking as a photographer just to look at other people's work and and uh, try to try to get something from it. I was wondering if you if you connected a little bit with the other photographers in the Cardano space. I know uh, I follow uh, Goat Mode. He's a skateboard photographer in the Philippines. There's uh, Frames by Lloyd, and he's actually a film photographer. I think he's also in the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken, and um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a few of them that are that are pretty interesting. I was just curious if you if you've connected a little bit with uh, other photographers in the space. Yeah, if you have like you know people and a good resource of people to connect with in Cardano uh, in terms of like the photography space specifically, that would if you could share a couple like people with me, I'd love to follow and reach out and and chat um it's it's been tricky finding not only just you know collections or or projects and initiatives on cardano specifically that are nfts but also uh photographers especially Uh, a lot of what i'm seeing on twitter and the spaces i'm joining um it almost seems like this resurgence of like web one and web two photographers that like you uh, you know, there's like a, a group of photographers on Instagram who were like the first, you know, thousand people on the app and they grew with the app and so did their exposure and their, their followings and stuff. And I, I have a lot of admiration for their work and what they're about. Um, but as I kind of explore more of this space and as it potentially becomes like a web three kind of thing, it felt just like the evolution of Instagram and the same photographers just now they're in this space. And so a lot of spaces I join, um, and, you know, like I said, it's not like, it's not that I don't like their work or that I don't like resonate them with them as like individuals or that I don't think their stories don't matter. It's just, they've kind of always been in the light. Um, and that's not so much an issue to me. Uh, it's more of like, okay, like, we all know you're here and we all love your work, but like who else is out there, right? Yeah. And like a really good one is it's, you know, other people's work and their stories matter. And I feel like you don't always see that as much. And that's why I respect like what you guys are doing, um, putting a spotlight on people that are doing like Cardano stuff specifically. But yeah, I would love to reach out to them because every space that I join, I'm trying to go through the people who are listening and find photographers, but not only find photographers that aren't the same 40 photographers that have that are everywhere on instagram and facebook and twitter and stuff um trying to find cardano photographers uh individually has been like a challenge and trying to find those spaces to learn and 
uh, you know, kind of root each other on has been a challenge. So, yeah, just following phrase by Lloyd. I do follow um, uh, Goat Mode. He's, I love his, his film stuff. Yeah, um, and but yeah, there's, there's, also, uh, there's also Bruschi. Uh, Bruschi, I think he's uh, an American photographer as well. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's more of a... Um, more of a, a landscape guy too, I think, and uh, yeah, those are the main three. Though well, there's uh, Jason Matias, of course, as, as well. Um, Jason Matias is a, a really um, special breed of um, photographer. Uh, he did a TEDx talk and everything, and he's a little bit of a, a little bit of a big shot, I think, in the in the scene. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be interviewing him actually on the I think it's on the 16th. On the sixteenth, yeah, and um, yeah, he has a, he has a lot to say, and he has a he really has a, a story to share, and and uh, great opinions uh, about art, and um, I have tons of research to do on uh, his work and his talks and his thoughts, but before I interview him, but um, uh, yeah, he seems like uh, quite the guy, quite the the, the photographer in the space, and. Uh, He's been working with his partner, Ali Illustrated, just uh, making a really interesting portraiture, and he's done some landscapes as well. So I think you, you two should, uh, you know, definitely try to connect with uh, with Matthias because I think uh, there's a little bit of a um, common thread with uh, the works regarding uh, landscapes. But uh, I'll be sure to send you uh, all the photographers I follow, and for for the uh, for the magazine. I was thinking about having uh, issue three is going to be a little bit complicated because I'm talking about you know AI artists and there's the Spring Collective and there's uh, a lot of different things going on in issue three. But the good news is that uh, for issue four that's going to be released in October, I want to make a special edition of the magazine that's purely dedicated. Uh, to um, photography and maybe talk about uh, other little projects in Cardano, but the main story would be uh, photographers in the Cardano scene. That would be the main story, and uh, I'll definitely use um, the interview we had today, get some info out of uh, uh, out of uh, your story, and uh, there's probably going to be about four, five, six different you know photographers in that issue, including yourself. Uh, if you happen to like the article, I'm going to write up uh, on your work. And um, yeah, so definitely, I think, uh, be on the lookout for that issue number four, because I think uh, the the photography scene needs to be, has a long, long, long way to go in Cardano to be, uh, to be further uh, developed. It really has this long path ahead of uh um, the photography scene, and it's really just the the beginning of um, the photography scene on uh, on Cardano, to be honest. And you're uh, you're one of the I think you 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 Christian are one of the early a uh, really early bird, and um, to be popping in the in the Cardano scene like that with those kind of pictures, uh, you seem to to have hopped in. Uh, pretty early and I, I just can't wait for you know more more photographers to come and learn about the space and meet up and so uh yeah i'll definitely be sending you some um some twitter handles on that and you could see you could see from there you know what resonates with you and and uh with who you could uh really connect and talk to and i think there's a um, great power into building um actually a photography collective uh, here on Cardano, and I think that would be that that'd be great to create such a uh, a collective force of photographers on Cardano. I think that'd be that that's another one of my my goals is to create this uh, community, but only like focused on photographers, right? And photography, and photography talks, and um, and developing that. I think there's huge power in that in uh, sharing different photographers' story and writing articles on it and just building, building up that community, man. Yeah. That, yeah that's something that I've kind of been exploring as well as like how to, you know, you kind of elevate and, and, you know, have people, cause a lot of stuff, and that was mostly why I never really wanted to get on Ethereum. Um, not so much because I just have like a philosophical, um, disagreement with the way, um, Ethereum is built currently and, and it will change post-merge when that's successfully implemented. 
Um, I, I will still continue to have criticisms. Um, there will be less of them post merch, um, but I still have, you know, valid criticisms about Cardano or about Tezos. Um, I try and not be, you know, directly tied down specifically, um, just because it's healthy to learn and kind of see what other people are doing in the scene. Um, and when I was chatting with some Ethereum photographers last night, they were just completely blown away to know that like when you mint, um, you know, an NFT on Cardano, that it's like a native asset on chain. Um, and platforms will dictate what kind of royalty you have and they all the protocols all have like a different standard and so a lot of people are using like manifold xyz to do like um to create a smart contract and to like create a royalty percentage that they're in control of because then when they go to other marketplaces um it, it works with foundation or it works with open sea and to hear that was just uh really interesting to me because you know when you mint something on cardano like if you use cardano tools when you create that policy id you set the standard for you put in the metadata that you want and you put in you know the royalty percentage and then if you don't want that changed and you don't want to run the risk of people thinking that you might alter that information or that that percentage down the road you could make it locked tomorrow um, or you could choose to do it a thousand days from now. And so it was really interesting that like a lot of people in Ethereum like didn't even know that that was possible, let alone that, you know, a chain was already doing that like with Cardano. And that's part of the reason why um, I kind of ended up jumping here. My way of thinking in life is everybody buys a Rolex, right? Um, and I don't ever want to buy a Rolex because everyone has a Rolex or and it's not that I don't think that like a Rolex is in a beautiful watch or that if, you know, it's a status symbol to show that you've made it in some kind of, you know, emotional, uh, mentally or physically, financially status, that, you know, that you've made it. It's just that everybody has a Rolex. And so everything in my life was like a lot of people have iPhones and I've always been Android or uh, a lot of people drove the same kind of car in high school. And so it wasn't that I had like qualms with those cars or whatever, but I was like, I want to drive something different. I want to explore something different than what everybody's doing. And so when I saw that a lot of traditional, um, you know, photographers that are in the scene and, and a lot of people who have done well for themselves, um, who I have a lot of respect for, we're all on Ethereum or we're all on OpenSea or we're all on Foundation. I said, wait, I don't really like that idea because I want to make like noise in a new avenue and I want to make noise with people who aren't in the same kind of party, in the same kind of group. So I've always like had that view on life is like what else is different out there and, and what can you enjoy and love. And so, yeah, I've always wore the different watches or I drove the different cars or uh, I liked the different music. Um, and it's, refreshing to look at it that way and I think that's kind of why I ended up uh, landing on Cardano specifically is because it was just a little bit like you mentioned you know you kind of say it how it is it's like the, the renaissance mentality it's like the uh, treading new waters that no one's ever really been in before which is kind of fun and interesting yeah, yeah definitely for sure you know uh, there's uh, I think there's still there's still huge potential uh, to come in uh, the Cardano scene, and it's really just a, it's really just a little, a little toddler now. And uh, back to what you were saying of you know going in the opposite direction of the herd, like I strongly agree with that, and it's I can't say it any better. Like when I, what I, I share the same, the exact same thought where. You know, when uh, when I see the herd, a herd of people going in one direction, I always go in the other direction. Like I would never, I would never be part of that that herd, right? Because I, I just see them as you know a little bit of uh, in a, in a, in a in a very peculiar way. I see that kind of herd effect as uh, a group of individuals who who have a hard time thinking for themselves and knowing who they really are. And my whole goal was to just, you know, do art to really understand who I am and what I want to say. And, and that's why, you know, everybody buys a Rolex, but 
I, I mean, I, I for sure I'm not going to buy into what everybody else is buying either. And, and even in my actions, you know, even in my actions, like, I, I never get, like, I never do, like, everyone where they always buy the the newest high-end shit. Like, I've been working with the same camera for six years now. And, yeah, I buy a couple of new lenses here and there, you know. But um, I'm not I'm not that kind of, like, tech head where I, I need the newest shit all the time. Like, a majority of people I know actually do. I've been trying to just get the maximum of what I can say with what I have. And yeah, you could see me more of like a gorilla, kind of like a gorilla filmmaker style and just a run and gun shooter basically. But for me, it, it just worked and that was kind of the way to go, you know. And I really like that run and gun style. It's quick, uh, speedy, minimal. And uh, that's, that's really what I like. I like uh, I like living in that moment and just you know snapping. When I do a lot of street, do a lot of street, I just like to I just like to snap, just to snap and then move on, you know, and be quick. Uh, the the thing I one of the things I hate the most is pulling out a tripod and try to you know take pictures with a with the tripod. I, I just not not that tripods are not good. They they're actually really good, and I happen to use them a lot as well, but. Uh, it depends on what you're doing, but um, yeah, I just I just like this running gun, and I never I never found value in renewing my gear every year, but I did find value in really working with uh, the bare minimum and using it to its uh, full potential, and yeah, so, and making it making it. Uh, rentable, like you would say in French. How do you say that? It's like, uh, you know, you make money w with it over time, basically, right? Um, so, um, yeah, that's uh, that's my whole thought about the the, the hurt effect, and uh, I definitely, I definitely agree with uh, with uh, with what you said. And I was uh, I was curious. Uh, What's uh what's the next uh do you have any plans like any plans in the in the Cardano scenes or with your photography do you have any any long term plans or are you just uh going uh going with the flow and doing you know what you seem what you seem fit what you seem right what seems right to you Yeah just uh the the biggest work was kind of doing the collection and and finding those nonprofits um I was, I kind of procrastinated for a couple of weeks because the idea to finally put everything together was, uh, happened back, back in November. Um, but I didn't actually put it up until July. Um, it was the end of June is when I kind of was like, okay, let's just do the damn thing. And so I spent, um, about two or three weeks getting everything put together and, um, putting together graphics and finding the nonprofits that felt right to me and, and reaching out to them. And, um, so after I kind of put that up, um, I've just been kind of exploring, you know, what does that collection mean now and going forward and, and what does it mean to, um, collectors? Um, and I'm in discussions with some, um, some like NFT frame companies and the idea is to kind of do something cool with the frames, with the collection. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back a little bit more on that once they, get back to me with some more of their plans after we've kind of been in discussion. So just trying to kind of, um, add like a thank you value to the current collector that I have now. And then anybody who eventually might come down the road. Um, cause I think this kind of will always be evolving. And so that not only that just secondhand royalty and the percentages from the sales, but it's like, I kind of want to branch into more like, reaching out like hey this was possible and this financial support to you guys as well as like the community was made possible um because of cardano and because of this network and because of people's love for artwork and, and photographs in particular so kind of want to start maybe doing some stuff like uh in person and uh getting out and volunteering with these organizations and people who would like to attend um and kind of 
using kind of Cardano as like a, a platform to make change with these places that kind of is beyond the photographs. So that's kind of in its early stages, but I've been exploring um, doing some additions on Cardano and I've been kind of looking around at Tezos, which is pretty interesting, kind of like what's going on over there. Um, I got a, a lot of respect for the way the chain operates over there and what they're all about. And the artists that are on there are, are pretty incredible as well. There's a, there's a really big uh, photography scene over there. Um, so I don't have any qualms with, you know, using utilizing Ethereum or anything. Um, it's just, yeah, it's going against the herd. Uh, I, when I see a lot of people utilizing something, I've kind of always been like, what else is there, you know, and, and who else is out there? Um, so, yeah, so you maybe kind of working on some addition ideas. There's a couple photos that I haven't ever done prints for, and I've never really shared that I'm looking to put up as like additions um, that are a little bit more meaningful for people and a little bit more attainable. Um, so, yeah, just kind of seeing what feels right and then exploring a little bit more. That's kind of how I got into the collection was just exploring the scene and exploring what felt right to me and then kind of go up from there. So what's what's next for you guys? Uh, any any fun, exciting plans uh, with, I mean, I know you mentioned the addition uh, in October being like tailored to photographers, but um, have you seen uh, like the uh, Rare Bloom and CNFT Con uh, events coming up? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we're definitely, uh, definitely have uh, have my eyes out on uh, for um, CNFT Con in October in Vegas. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it because I happen to be in Ireland at the moment uh, for my um, uh, commercial work, and uh, I just uh, I, I won't be able to make it, which sucks. Uh, but I'm planning actually on working with um, a photographer, which I haven't found yet, to try to actually give me some coverage on uh, for CNFT Con to try to, you know, publish an article in the magazine uh, in regards of um, everything uh, that went down uh, with uh, with that event. Uh, regarding Rare Bloom. Uh, I'm not very um, uh, familiar uh, with uh, what they're doing. Uh, I knew I, I've heard that they're doing an event, and I think it's uh, the whole this rare build thing is uh, is uh, by uh, Big Pay, the the YouTuber Big Pay, who's big uh, big Cardano head as well. Uh, I I don't I'm not I'm not very familiar with Rare Bloom, but uh, but I'm sure they they have something. Uh, definitely good uh, stored and and great that's uh, gonna happen uh, with uh, with the community there uh, what's going on with uh, rare bloom what are they planning Christian yeah so CNFT cons uh, as you're familiar with probably, they're a little bit more tailored specifically to like the CNFT kind of scene um, uh, rare bloom is gonna be more tailored to uh, kind of Cardano as a whole so kind of what's going on with the proposals and they'll probably end up discussing, um, you know, project nine kind of catalyst stuff. And, uh, to, I think Charles Hoskinson and then a bunch of other, there's some bigger projects that are NFT related that kind of have like a bigger influence in terms of the, the network and what they're doing. So it's kind of like a more like broader scope of like Arnado and specifics, like, what's new and what's going on and where they're headed with it. So they'll have a bunch of speakers and stuff. It won't be tailored specifically to NFTs, but I think um, you can do booths and stuff. And so I won't be able to attend CNFT Con because my, um, my good friend who I mentioned earlier, who I run around and take pictures with uh, over the years, he's getting married. So I won't be able to attend that, but I'm looking to attend Rare Bloom. Um, just because it's I'm like two states away, so driving there would be like no problem. But yeah, it's just kind of a bigger overview. So uh, I'm mostly going there to just absorb um, and kind of soak up, you know, what's going on in the industry and what Cardano's doing and looking to do specifically. And then if there's NFT tidbits in there, then I'll kind of soak that up as well. But I won't be doing like a booth or speaking or anything. But yeah. I don't know, maybe some, maybe change my mind. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's always great to you know like, uh, connect with uh, the community in the real world because we ha I don't know if it feels like we're we're all behind these screens and trying to build something, but 
the this is, there's something magical in you know seeing someone in person and actually talking um, directly to, to, to into someone's eyes. Uh, I think there's huge uh, huge power in that. So uh, yeah, I'm happy that you're 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 going to manage to go to that uh, rare bloom event, you know. And you could always say hi to Big Pay for for me from uh, CNFT Monthly Magazine, you know. Um, and Big Pay it seems like um, a really really nice guy, uh, doing great things and putting a lot of uh, putting a lot of information uh, about Cardano on uh, on uh, on the YouTube and getting a bigger and bigger audience every time I happen to. Uh, see one of his videos so uh yeah definitely definitely uh be on the lookout for those two events um and uh and be on the lookout for you know issue three being released on um the 5th of september uh we're putting uh tons of work into this magazine and right now i say we but it's actually really a one-man job i'm doing like all of it you know the interviews the articles the graphic design, the minting, uh, the the whole thing is like the 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 whole drive uh, of CNFT Monthly is just uh, insane, and um, but the the mission is really clear. We just we just wanna 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 really build up and and uh, promote and work the best we can with uh, independent artists to to have their voice just be heard and. And um, and get the word out there on on the authentic stuff, you know. I think uh, there's lots of 10k projects that just end up dying, and it's really sad to see that there's very little interest in the in the independent artists and on one on one art. There's very little interest for that kind of art right now on Cardano, and I see a lot of places popping up like like Springboard, like Liminal, trying to change that culture. And the magazine too, trying to change that culture. So hopefully, uh, one of us is one of us, or all three of us, or all the projects involved in really part in really participating in that in that cultural shift in the in the Cardano scene will hopefully see the the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, soon enough when when independent artists who are normally overlooked and underrated become become uh, have basically have the possibility to like thrive in the space and not be and not be overlooked anymore i think uh, i think there has to be the you know the other side of that coin you know like you know when i see your work i don't understand like how come you're not getting more eyeballs you know you see that that's a that's a problem right there you know and um and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna stick to that mission. And um, I just wanted to say, man, it was great to talk with you and learn about your story. Uh, I'm gonna edit this recording and you know put it on the YouTube uh, so everybody could you know kind of go back to it and learn about your story and a little bit about mine as well. So uh, it's been a uh, it's been a great ride, and we got some uh, you know good content for. Uh, people to listen to and learn more about your work what do you think yeah that's that's awesome thank you so much and you know for you guys want to you know feature anything or um for uh, the october issue for the fourth one and if there's any kind of questions you want clarified or if you want them kind of typed out in a, a format um feel free to send over uh, like a, a message format or I could shoot you over an email um, and you can send that and I can respond to those two to kind of help condense the answers a little bit so it's just easy for you to just kind of paste those in there and not have to um, you know kind of go through the recording a whole lot uh, for that in two months so I definitely definitely uh, uh, more than welcome to, to answer some of those should you have you know anything you need clarified or whatever but yeah thank you so much for letting me kind of share what i'm about and what i'm doing and yeah it's you know like i said it's a it's a new horizon and it's it's exciting and it's a lot of fun and you know nobody really knows you know where it will end up or what is kind of always going on with it so it's cool that you guys are putting out something that's not only specifically tied to like the coverage around kind of like nfts in particular but you know people on cardano and that's super valuable and um and that's that's rad so yeah thanks for 
having me on and, and chatting and you know thanks for taking you know an hour and a half out of your sunday and uh i hope you have a good time out in ireland and uh you know have some have some fun on your shoots 